9.04 really happily. Well, 9.4, when it was sort of in development, I, I started finding out that they were patching, they were changing GNOME, putting in their own changes, doing things to it that I didn't like, such as moving the, it's little things to begin with, like the shutdown and log out from the system menu, because that should have always been there with the auto shutdown feature, but they decided to remove that and things like that. And 9.10, they did something, and then 10.4, they had loads of this, and they had these like, do you really want to shut down? And do you really want to restart messages when trying to shut down? On why would you want to shut down? Which I didn't like at all. It was like, oh no. And I didn't like it's, any- it's probably quite reasonable, actually, to be fair. I sometimes mistakenly hit the wrong keys or one yeah, that thing, and, and then I really don't want it to start shutting down my application. Yeah, yeah, okay, but I was just thinking about that whenever it was, because with because I recently installed Skype so that I could do this audio cast and unfortunately and I, well, I have to do it in Windows at the moment because my headset doesn't really work with Linux at the moment I have to configure it somehow anyway, with Skype, when I was shutting it down it, it would come up and say to me like if you shut down you won't get the instant messages and you won't be able to receive calls but then at the bottom it says do you, like you can say I don't want to see this message I don't want to see this box again and I was thinking like, okay, well that's good. That's what quite a lot of programs do. They do come up with these these helpful for some people messages, but they let you remove them easily as well. But with a bunch of actually, they never ever did that. You have to. Do you really want to shut down? Do you really want to log out messages? But they never says on them. Do you do you really want to? Do you want to get rid of this? Don't they want this here at all? Isn't it they a never, never had the option. Is it a really feature to do with Ubuntu itself, or is it something that then it's, it's, it's a feature now. It's well, it was it was just started off as patches that they added into GNOME 2, yeah. and then you could remove you could remove the patches, and you can have your yeah. shutdown and log out back in system menu, or whatever yeah. else they removed. But they um, 8.10 had both, but the 9.4 only had it on top one. You can never really have both. Well, not that I I tried to have both. I want to have both. I want to have just in the menu, the system menu, and on the top one. But I can just do that. And one thing, yeah. Well, one one, one one thing that bothered. I, I, we, we, by the way, we have some interruptions with voice sometimes on your side, which it's probably okay, and maybe we can go break some. Uh, well, it's, for the time being, it works a bit. Uh, it's it's going to sound a bit funny, but but, uh, but, uh, but occasionally, don't don't worry. I, I, I'll try and make up until it, it works fine on your side. I was just going to say something about the. Uh, I, I never get the tendency of distributions to put the uh, to put the uh, shutdown menu. Uh, or the shutdown shortcuts and things like buttons at the menu for you to shut down or to lock the computer and things like that. I think it's reasonable to hide them a layer down because you can mistakenly click on them. I mean, I, I almost shut down the computer sometimes because I've got key, two keyboards in front of me and sometimes I press control I'll delete the wrong one, so it gives me a dialog of shutting down uh, on the wrong computer. Uh, but one of the, the things that I, I, don't, I don't understand why they would put something quite so fatal or quite so serious so in such a prominent position in general, I don't think even Windows is doing that. You have to really click on something before you can, you know, before... Yeah, I mean, mm. Win- Windows, Windows, you know, it's, <laughs> as in, you know, Windows is fine for shutdown, really. You start well, shutdown. Well, yeah, you ch- or... start shutdown, which is very intuitive, of course, because when you want to shut down the computer, you have to start something. That's, that's what they would have you believe, that, that this is intuitive. You go to start when you actually want to finish something. Uh, and all kinds of stuff. I, I think Apple has got this really strange thing of like pushing, putting things in the trash to unmount them. And I'm saying, I don't want to put my CD in the trash. I say, oh, that's you, how you unmount it. I'm saying, well, that doesn't it sound like unmount it for me. It looks like deleting the, the disk or something. So well, it, obviously, it, this isn't the only reason I got a bit unkeen on Ubuntu because that would be a bit silly, but there are other reasons as well, but well, on but on this subject, this shutdown and log out, how it should have been in the system menu all, all the time, and how, when they had GNOME 2, and how it, there should have been the automatic shutdown feature after a minute, right, and how ideally you should be able to have it on the top right, because that's what they were doing, you should have had it both ways, I think. Yeah. But what's interesting, I, I found, when I was testing out, well, when I, it must have been the development version to begin with, of what would, one of them that would become 11.04, but they actually fixed this in the Ubuntu Classic desktop. They actually yeah. made it. They actually pull it how I wanted it. And and then when I put Ubuntu 11.04, I had the release candidate on for about I don't know about a week or two or something or something like that. And 
I got oh, I got it the week before the final or something like that. And I had that on a bit longer than I was supposed to. And then I was put on the final as well, the reinstall. And I was going to, I only, the idea was to test out Unity and then try out the GNOME 3 PPA. But I ended up uh, actually running a run to 11.04 longer, much longer than I had intended to on my computer. Because I, um, because I was, I just ended up happy with a classic desktop or I, and that kind of thing. And especially when I put, I'm actually one of the people who like the old brown, uh, Ubuntu look. There's a lot of people don't like the old look. I actually was looking, I took some photos when I was running Ubuntu for 4.10. Uh, I took some photos and things and uh, screenshots as well. I don't, I don't look at the screenshot too many, too many times, but um, it could, well, it could, it could change. I always say I change the colors. I, I don't like brown on my. It's just a matter of taste. I like very dark, uh, not completely yeah. dark, but darker windows and uh, the contrast in such a way. And uh, one thing that occurred to me is that it used to be, be pretty ugly at the time compared to the other distros I was using. So uh, yeah, back, <laughs> back then I, I used to use them mostly. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Ubuntu has always been a bit. I think that's true for many people that Ubuntu has always been. I mean, even the installer. The installer was only text based. The the installer, it was based on GDK, so the installer was very not user friendly. It was hard to find packages and they didn't really have sensible names. Unless you're a Debian person, you don't really know what you're looking for quite specifically. So even finding OpenSSH was not so simple. I'm talking about the first release of Ubuntu, really, just they kind of a really start and start. Yeah. Well, that's all, the ma- material, saying that material is a bit like this. It's a bit, um, it's Mudia 1. It's, it's not, they don't really have very nice graphics. I think the basis that they go yeah. from is, uh, they start from Andreevus, they already start from something quite mature. Uh, they start from something that's a bit more up to date with respect to the, uh, well, first, what, one thing I, I suppose they have is things like all kinds of flash plugins and, which back in the days were not quite so common as a something that comes with a distro, and I don't think Adobe made available the latest version of Flash for uh, Linux at the same time as the rest of the platforms. So things have improved in general since. I um. This was oh yeah so uh, qu- yeah the brown look I I like that well the light version for 9.10. Yeah, I've heard those. Then there's the more later 9.10 Ubuntu version. But I what I did with Ubuntu is I ended up. You, you know, with 10.4, I would, I would cut the old brown theme there. I, I never really liked. I've never. It's called I've, human, isn't it? No. Yeah, yeah, it's human clear looks. It's based on the uh, default gnome theme, clear looks, which is blue. And yeah. um, Fedora, Fedora, well, it used, well, okay, it's using. Fedora I mean, it's using yeah. gnome shell now, of course, but before that's that was what they used. Human clear looks is like default gnome, gnome, gnome theme. Yeah, the rates for netbooks, and uh, I think that's what the. Uh, the whole Unity thing came from them trying to adapt the uh, netbook look into yeah, some yeah. multi-desktop. I, I want to say something else about looks. Um, and then Ubuntu, it's always been, I think, Ubuntu's never really been, I think, for a lot of people, graphics-wise, it's never really been that nice looking. I think there is a tendency to think that the enterprise thing have to have certain colors. And one of those colors is probably not going to be orange and brown. If you're sitting in an office and everybody's yeah, they, wearing, yeah, they, it's a bit like coming to the office with an orange shirt and with brown pants or something if you're kind of working in an office. And then there is the association of the brown desktop with yeah, something that's more, not very uh, mm-hmm. enterprise friendly. Kind of, you don't see many brown looking. Uh, it's not very brown; it's more like orange. But yeah, yeah, you don't see many of those see. enterprise sites. They don't tend to choose these colors. I'm not sure why, and it could be a very good explanation for it, but. Uh, there is an association connotation, like certain colors you need to use to be seen as a professional site or a professional business. And, uh, you know, the said color of your tie, your shirt, your, you know, probably won't be wearing like a purple suit or something. Just won't be taken seriously if you do that. Uh, so, so what, that's one of the barriers I think was, uh, uh, Ubuntu has had, and I think they sort of carried the torch in many ways for Linux. Um, whether unintentionally or not, people were thinking, you know, Linux desktop equals Ubuntu, and so they sort of assess the Linux desktop based on the default, obviously default theme of Ubuntu, even though it doesn't have just the one theme, it's several of them, uh, and and that was becoming very synonymous with the uh, with the Linux and desktop. Does it have a chance? Wins actually? Can Ubuntu make it against you know X, Y, and Z platforms? So, 
Uh, and I, I think at the same time you did have some distros which were geared up towards uh, enterprise users and were more uh, forthcoming with biases and colors and uh, conventions, uh, uh, including all kinds of uh, blobs and things. I, I call